Hello and welcome to Train Sim TV. Right, in today's video we're going to be having a look at uh, some more of the Hope Valley. So, again, no reviews or anything like that. This isn't a, uh, it kind of is a showcase still because we're showing some more uh, parts of the route. Uh, basically, bits that Mark didn't show on, on his video because it would have made it too long to do it all in one hit. Um, so this one's going to focus on the line up to New Mill Central, um, going along via Ashbury's. Uh, we're going to have a look at the station along the way. Uh, it's not a massively long run, it's about a half hour or so, so quite a nice easy one. But I want people to slash one for this working as well. Uh, I don't know if they have new mills on the destination blind. No, it says blank on the actual uh, briefing for this one, we'll leave it blank. Doors shut a little bit earlier, but I don't think we're off just... Uh, yeah, no, we've got about 30 seconds, uh, the road on itself just yet. Um, so yeah, we're at Manchester Piccadilly um, once again for the start of the video. Um, I'm not going to go flying around here because Mark did that on the last video. So if you do want to see what Manchester Piccadilly looks like, please do have a look at the showcase video that came out previously to this one. Um, we'll have a look at everything beyond there. So we've got Ardwick Depot just as we uh, turn off at Ardwick. Um, and then, as I say, we'll be off towards uh, Ashbury's and onwards to New Mills Central. We're going to be calling it Ashbury's Ryder Brow. Reddish North, Brinnington, Redbury, Romilly, Marple, Strines and New Mills Essential. And then we're going to do a reversal into the sidings as well, just so we can clear the way for um, the next services that are going to be passing through. Make sure I get my actual control all set up. Would be helpful. <laughs> So yeah, the route's been out since Thursday. Um, Thursday just gone, which was the 22nd. Um, so yeah, it's been out a couple of days now. So for anyone that has purchased it, we uh, are just trains, obviously, part of the JT team. Um, hope you are enjoying it. Um, again, for those that are still uh, and ahhing, if it's not, uh, overly, if they're not overly sure about that, hopefully these videos may uh, change your mind, may persuade you to uh, head on over and have a look. The link will be in the description, of course, if you do um, want to have a look on the JT page. Uh, just have a look in the description below and they'll be somewhere near the top um, and that'll take you directly to that page. Uh, the scenario we're driving is one that comes with the route. We are doing one Sierra 16 which is the uh, 1319 Manchester Piccadilly to New Mills Central working. Uh, it goes on to say good afternoon driver, today you'll take a 15123 on a stopping service to New Mills Central. Uh, please set up your cab, you are due to depart at 1319. Um, even though we don't have the GSMR such, the details um, for all that would be uh, two Sierra 16 signals MP350 and our destination is blank because um, the 150 slash 1 doesn't have a uh, numeral central on the destination blind um, unfortunately. Maybe this might uh, change in the future but who knows. Um, also just please ignore the fact that the doors are half open on that 185, I think that's something to do with the 185's coding, it's not the route or anything of such, it just sometimes happens and I have seen that on other routes unfortunately. But yeah, some, something that needs looking at um, on there on the developer side of the ATS front. So it's just one of the things. So it doesn't detract anything from us. Um, it'll be out of our eyes in a second. So again, nice and busy coming out of Piccadilly, as you can see. It's, it's quite something to see when you do have a drive out of here and driving in, of course. It's great to see all the trains snaking about and like waiting the turn to come in uh, on this busy, busy throat to the station. <clears throat> So shortly after we're going to turn off here at um, Hardwick Junction, I think it is. It's just clear to green, so that's good. Shall mute my phone. We keep going off. <laughs> Response that after. There we go. Right. What I'll do is I'm just gonna get out of the station and we'll pause just to show you the station quickly. Uh, I don't think Mark showed this one because obviously this one on his actual direction of travel. So uh, this is just off the the main line. Still over at Wired. Um, obviously this is the line that would uh, take you onwards towards Guybridge. then up the uh, the former Woodhead uh, route up as far as Hadfield and also to Glossop. Uh, so, yeah, a small little section of that takes you through and feeds onto the um, the new mills uh, line as well there. 
So, small station. Honestly, there's a couple of trains, I believe, a day. I'm not sure if there's one in each direction, to be honest. So, it's, it's not really a busy station at all. Um, I've, I'm yet to see a scenario actually uh, use the station. So, as you can see, um, quite a simple version. It's just an island platform. There's a, there's a small uh, shelter, a bench. Um, not even a timetable in the timetable board either, eh? but I think there's some information boards on the other side of the bridge, so you can see it's pretty run down. Um, this metal bridge here. I think if you come down here, I do believe somewhere there is um, info. It's over there. You've also got a ticket machine down there as well. Yeah, yep. No timetables. <laughs> there's something there. But I say it's like one one a day, so. You're not really going to figure out what time the train is going to stop here, are you? Um, but yeah, so literally that's that. And literally alongside there, this is a Ardwick Depot. So this depot, out of the two, does have interior. This one's not as taxing as uh, Longsight. Longsight is an absolute monster of a uh, depot. So to give that an interior would really drain your resources, even put, like, just putting a basic interior in there. Um, we didn't want to kill it anymore. Um, so this one... Um, Already had it uh, an interior from uh, when the model was brought over from uh, with Nick. So Nick spruced it up um, from his um, previous developments that he made originally. Um, he's adapted it to fit the track work, obviously, as well. So some changes did get actually made to the model, so some stuff were moved around so it will fit. Um, I think the textures were updated and stuff as well. So yeah, that's that one. But it had a, an interior anyway, so it was made use of. Um, only one line in it has actually as well, which is quite weird. Um, and quite cool at the same time, as you see the difference in the doors there for the pantograph to go through. Um, and uh, obviously over here, you've got the uh, stable and roll like the 185 as well. Um, the canopies out here, these cool little platforms as well. Um, I think this is like a wash build, I'm not sure if it's like a train wash or again another maintenance depot. I'm not really sure what that one is personally. I feel like with it being three mile now, it might be a train wash. Sure, someone can uh, let us know in the comments on that one. Let's have a bit of a cutout speed board as well. Can't go wrong with a bit of a cutout speed board. So from where we are to um, like New Mills Central is, I don't know, because it doesn't want to show me. Okay, we're not going to get that. I think it's about 13, maybe about even 10 miles to be fair, um, down to New Mills. Something in there that stopped it from giving the, the actual distance, but I think it's somewhere around 10 miles. Not a long section, but it does take some time to get there because the whole station is really close. So doing your stopping stuff, you uh, it keeps you busy. Got a line coming in from uh, Phillips Park, um, which is the line that comes off um, the Huddersfield line um, near Mouse Platin. That's a, I think that's more of like a, an ECS line, really. Don't see any services, more moving trains around and probably a little bit of freight here and there. Just yeah. show you Ashbury Station as well, just uh, whilst we're going through there. So. You've got an entrance on the left hand side there which takes you to the station and you would then uh, you uh, cross over the footbridge there onto the other platform again quite a simple arrangement two platforms a couple of shelters um a footbridge um on this one it's a post and stuff so you've got some bits to do with um the area as well so they've got these uh information boards so we're currently on the gossip line but we have we've obviously turned off uh, in a moment so it wouldn't um doesn't account for the route we're doing, but it's still nice to see that board. Uh, you got a church on that picture. That church is there, so that's um, that's featured. So that's quite cool. So we see if we can find any information about it. So just a ten minute walk away from Ashbury Station is Gorton Monastery, uh, designed in soaring Victorian Gothic uh, by the architect E. W. Pugin, and completed in eighteen seventy two. The monastery served for more than a century as a Ransatian friary and a Roman Catholic church. For the people of Gorton. It's also Grade A listed um, as well. Grade A 2, I think that is. Um, it's, cur it's currently closed uh, now as a church. That happened in 1989, but since 2007, it's been used as a community centre and a conference venue. 
monastery is well worth a visit. Check online. Um, a public opening hours and events. Ooh. Interesting. I just thought it was a church. I didn't realise it was like a monastery. That's quite cool. And that obviously sits proudly just in the uh, distance there. Again, other bits of posters. You've got stuff like um, East Lanks Railway on there and the uh, Transport Museum. You've got Heat and Park Tram. Uh, little tram uh, museum thing as well. So, yeah. Ashbury's. If we turn off here, you'll note there's a, a quite a, a, a steep gradient dropping down, uh, which takes you down to the, uh, the line that we're now uh, continuing down. Uh, for a short while, it's uh, one in. And it sorts itself. It's one in eighty-seven once it settles itself. So you do want to watch yourself with your brakes uh, for a short while because you'll find yourself um, picking up speed quite quick. Just again to touch on the um, with the scenario, so this one comes with a JT pack. There is as well for anyone that doesn't have all the stock and wants to at least drive it, there is a default version. Um, not to everyone's taste, of course, the default version, but they are there to serve a purpose for people that don't have a lot of stock in their, uh, in their game. And they can at least drive stuff. It keeps them moving. On this section of the route, you'll note as well, there's loads of uh, like litter. Strewn about. Quite, uh, quite a grubby round on this part. It's not like this all the way, it goes into a real lovely, uh, picturesque area once to start getting out away from Manchester a bit more. All the aqueducts and the viaducts that will go over. So, this is Bellevue Station. We're not actually calling it this one, we're calling it Radebrow, which is just around the bend. So, again, we'll have a look around here um, in a second as we just cross through. Again, simple uh, platform arrangements here. A couple of platforms. Um, you've got um, a couple of shelters, really. That's about it. There's not nothing massive on the, uh, on some of these ones. Uh, a bit further up the year, do get a bit more, um, a bit more busier uh, in in terms of what's going on with the uh, stations and the type of buildings they've got on them. Um, again, posters and whatnot to do with the area. This is Bellevue, so you change here as well for the race course, which is there. So that's the Greyhound um, racetrack. Which is um, there with the little stadium itself. See in the distance as well, Beaton Tower. Is that uh, really tall one with that weird little bit at the top um, poking up? You can see that for quite a good distance as well. See a few trees. There's a pen lamp as well. <laughs> quite a cool little feature. I actually like that in real life as well. And, uh, Nick, Nick spotted that and modelled it in. So yeah, quite a few of these stations are rather close together. So you, it's a lot of stop and start uh, while you're getting through. And as you can see, once again, right a brow, it's pretty much the same sort of story here. A couple of shelters here uh, for the platforms. Let's take a look around while we're uh, picking up the passengers. Got nice grimy signage here as well. Little bits that fall off the trees and in the rain that have uh, just dried up. there for the uh, the thumbnail you never know when you might get a, a decent screenshot for what you need if he's got a potential no uh, we're going the wrong way come on there we go
Reddish North is our next station, just under a mile, 0.8 of a mile that is. Again, once we go through this section, we'll uh, clear away from all the litter strewn area. But again, there's quite a lot uh, lobbed around the track areas off the bridges. This was something that I think Nick spotted on the cab rides and stuff, so we replicated that again. You want to be uh, lining your front doors up with the Harrington Hump here. You can see there's nest board as well, just by the uh, the far end of the platform before it goes in the overgrown bit. Make sure you line yourself up from there. Not all the platforms have the hump, but there's, there's a couple on this section that do it uh, comfortable. I mean, that side doesn't have one. Quite weird how some sides seem to have them and others don't, but maybe the other platforms aren't so bad that need it. So, a bit more going on here, as you can see, there's um, a station building that sits here, obviously a little uh, ticket room. I'm not sure if it's a ticket room, it's a waiting room to be honest. Um, you can get a ticket from the machine here, so maybe it's just a little waiting room. Oh, so, it is a booking office, so when booking office is closed, you go out that way. So, booking office. So, this platform is for trains. Um, uh, to Manchester, Overbridge, obviously, is uh, Marple, New Mills. You just sit there, you mate. <laughs> Next station is Bridlington, uh, one and a half miles away. We're going to cross over the Reddish Vale Viaduct as well shortly. Quite a, a grand structure. I think it goes over a little part. I think. There's some like, ponds or fishing lakes in, underneath it. So we're crossing under the line that goes to, well, what was like the reddish depot line, uh, then I think it goes towards like Guide Bridge and that sort of stuff. Crosses over. One that comes off from Heaton Norris. <clears throat> it used to go past where the depot used to be at Reddish. Nice look, looks like some nice walks around here and some nice areas to explore. Like little fishing, I think there's a little fishing pond or something. Like they've got these little uh, piers on them where you can obviously perch yourself and just uh, let the day roll by and uh, not have a care in the world, just go fishing. And uh, occasionally watch a train roll by. I can imagine it being very peaceful around here when once the train's gone by.
unless someone wants to tell me otherwise, and it, it might be totally, it might be the totally opposite. It might be really noisy, full of yobs, people causing trouble. <laughs> but it looks nice in the game. That's what matters. Put the brakes a bit earlier there because we are climbing up. I'm still not got quite to grips driving this part of it because I spend I seem to spend more time doing the stop port end rather than this. When I come to ever do a stopping run on this, I, I seem to struggle with my braking. I put the brakes maybe too late or too soon, depending on which way I'm going. So if I'm going this way, I'm always putting on too early and then stopping. Going down, I'll put them too late and I end up rolling through the station. So I don't roll through a station or miss the station on this video, I'm happy. So Brinnington have got some quite interesting little shelters. They're, they're made out of brick, I think they've got corrugated roof, but they're, up, they're held up by these like metal like, steel frames. Girders. Quite interesting. The other one's nice, it's got um size and a corrugated roof, a bit more uh, normal looking. Well, that, I like I like that stuff. quite cool. Little uh, entrance or ticket hall. I, I'm not always I'm presuming it's a little ticket hall. I have some ticket machines in it. I'm not really sure what's inside there. But you can obviously enter the uh, station if it's uh, closed off the bridge itself. Obviously, the platforms serve longer trains at some point because they've got overgrown section on. <clears throat> uh, Bradbury next mile away. Uh, we're going to cross over the uh, M60 Ring Road as well, on the over the Gird with the Girder Bridge. Here. It's a very cool little structure. It's over there. You can see just just in the distance. I pause a second. So you can see over there, got the uh, terminal. I think that's where they used to do the bin liner trains. I'm not sure if they still do it like, but it was. Um, there's also the um, aggregates loading area as well, where you can do run through your freight. Uh, ignore that I've got PO branding on my containers. Um, I've got a branding patch from somewhere which overwrites the original Kuju containers. So it's put p and branding on but with the route they'll just be um, playing blues and stuff. So any branding on the containers bar some of the bottom ones, which I think came with uh, TS Academy. Um, other than that, um, yeah, stuff like the blue and green ones here, I think those are just standard block colours. Um, they shouldn't really have them on this. Just, I don't have a clue what branding pack I've got. I don't know where it's come from. And unfortunately, I'm not reverting my train sim <laughs> to get rid at this moment in time. <laughs> I need to be in a really like a willing frame of mind to actually reinstall train sim and I'm really hating that willing mind to do it at this moment. So come out here a second while we go over, that's where the um Redbury Tilcom um unloading facility is there. So obviously you, you do a bit of shunting around here. You can't just go in, you'd have you've got to separate the train, split it into two parts and shunt stuff back. Makes for a good scenario. Test your uh, on the braking because it's on a gradient as well. So yeah, it's quite a challenge. Also, after this video, there will be one more video um, 
featuring another part of the Hope Valley at some point to come, which will be the Hope Cement Works. Um, there is a scenario that comes to that section of the show. We might actually do that scenario as a video, or part of it at least, just to give you a little run and show you what's down there. So Mark didn't get right up to the Cement Works on the uh, previous video. He, he got near it, but the scenery, don't think it didn't load quite in there, so I don't think he got all the way in there. Uh, so we'll, we'll feature that on another video at some point down the line quite soon. That's quite a, a good place to have a little uh, play about with. And I'm looking forward to see like, sort of other people's scenarios, be, if, them, if anyone makes anything down there. look around the station while we're setting off. That's a little footpath that you can uh, have a little wander down. Get some nice little screenshots there for suns on the right side. Nice little view. So soon, soon enough we'll be at Romilly, that's not that far away, under a mile, point eight or so. Go through a short tunnel, then we'll join up with the line that comes in off Woodley. Um, the, it's the line that comes, the Hyde Loop, I think it's called. So it's one that comes from Guybridge and comes round. It's not fully included on this route, uh, it runs up as far as uh, Woodley, as you can see on that map there where the portal is. Um, it's just so it allows you to use Bradbury Tilken, otherwise uh, you'd not be able to get in there and have it. And it's fully scenery down there, it's the same style and standard as the rest of the route, so it's fully usable if you want to bring a star in for starting up there. Just to 30 somewhere around here. The line coming uh, is on the left now as well. This uh, elevates in on the curve. Makes some nice screenshots as well when you uh, when you're leaning in. One grubby signal box to the right there as well. We'll have a little look around there and we'll take a look around the station in a second as well. I'll show you guys if you've not seen it at all. Same with anything, if you've not seen anything, of course, this is all new to you. Um, not everyone watches the JT streams, so not everyone's seen the route. So, this is what this video is all about just to show you stuff. On these little waiting rooms as well. Cool thing as well, it's a bit like New Mill's uh, box at this point. It's got the, the, the scaffolding up the back supporting it all. I love all the, the grime on the front as well, it's really cool. All these potential screenshots you see. I'll, I'll go through them and look out for which is the best. Which suits well for a thumbnail. I'm just going to show you the front area as well because uh, it's got a nice little uh, station front. We've got Marple for our next station. So we've got Marple, Strines, I think it's Strines, it said. 
the Astrides and then uh, New Mill Central. So not that far, uh, and then we'll do a reversal into the New, new Mill siding. You'll notice as well the old sighting boards um, on a number of the bridges along the route. Um, these are from when the semaphores used to obviously sit. If they were located just in front of the bridge, they'd put the uh, the white board on the back of them there. But the old the yeah the sight boards are they're done by I think a decal, so they're just placed over the top rather than like extra texture, which is quite cool. Let's do an external view just as we cross over the viaduct here. You see the aqueduct as well on the uh, the right there. The the railway crossing over the top of this uh, metal bridge. Got the line to Rosehill Marple uh, to the right hand side there as well. Um, we'll probably feature that at some point. I'm not going to show that just now. I know we can go nearby it, but I'll, I'll do something with that. Probably get another video from that. Going the opposite way. So even though you're, just, you're getting like Sheffield, Manchester, you actually you, you are getting those different ways and different opportunities to snow at the same time, which is really cool. Well, this is Marple. Plenty of uh, Agatha, uh, Ag Agatha, get that right, Agatha Christie um, artwork. For Miss Marple. I love how the uh, station's got this sort of modernised footbridge with lift on there. Yet it um, it keeps in line with the style of like the stonework as well, so it, it it's not out of place. It's not one of these massive fancy new modern structures, even though it is. It's uh, it's been built with materials that uh, match in nicely with the the natural surroundings. Plate uh, on there, all. Might be the biggest gap between stations now, um, our full dust drives, it's two miles. This is where it gets scenic and picturesque now. We start um, going more rural, but we'll start going to cuttings and um, crossing over more valleys and viaducts. We'll cross over the Goit shortly as well. We emerge from the tunnel into the uh, pretty fantastic rock cutting here. Uh, retaining walls and stuff as well just to hold everything in place but obviously it's just no no easy job obviously in training and trying to sculpt all this sort of stuff um, obviously Nick must have had an absolute mare trying to get it just right just to how he wanted it 
Again, there's the crossing over the goit. You can just see in the distance there. Again, there's another potential for a screenshot as well. All these views. So what I look for in a screenshot is the main focus, obviously, the route, the viaduct with the train. But also, I, what I look for is trying to make it so there's enough gap in the top, in the sky, so I can get the writing in. And I must have pressed the wrong button there. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. We didn't want to do that. Oh, I'm just really, really good screenshot. I was going to press F12, I pressed button. Oh, maybe... Great balls kicking, I might be able to do something to salvage it. Purple. That was a perfect opportunity, I've just absolutely murdered that. <laughs> oh dear. Never mind. These things happen. As you can see now, it's, the, the, the landscape's totally changed now. There's not as many, there's no houses or anything really, there's just little villages here, little settlements. Opposed to the uh, towns and bits we've just come out of. You won't think really, we're only what, around 10 miles if that out of Manchester. It's pretty uh, mad to see how quick it changes. Welcome to Strines. Some uh, nice little artwork bits above there. Home of the railway children. Some more bits of information about the area. Show's way. So next stop's New Mill Central, uh, 1.3 miles away. We'll do our um, drop off there and then we'll change ends and move on to the uh, sidings. Again, as I say, it was just—it wasn't a massively long video. It's probably turned into a longer video than what I'd uh, originally planned because um, I've been stopping and showing you guys at home just bits and pieces along the way, just pointing bits out. Uh, yeah, so these videos always go longer than what you usually think. Hopefully you uh, enjoy it, or have enjoyed it, if you're still here at this point, and hopefully um, it, it may make you want to click the link to go towards the uh, the website and maybe think about grabbing it. The route itself drops to 20 just beyond the station as well, but we're not going to be uh, running that part. So the uh, the turn back side is just to the left here. So you, you will have seen this very slightly on Mark's video, but uh, we did fly over it, I think. So you have actually seen this, but again, we're going to do the driving into it this time. 
get your first taste of um, semaphore action on this part of the route as well when you get to here. You get obviously colour light signals and I mean there's colour the stencils and stuff in it, but you get a ground signal, which is the old semaphore style, and over here as well. It's sort of changing um, the different type here. As I say, you get around uh, New Mills Junction uh, it's, uh, a little bit further around the line, and there's some semaphores around there as well. You get your proper area of that though when you get like near Edel, Bill Sidings, those are your proper semaphore areas and Grindleford and that. Uh, get this cap put down. Now the train is empty, you'll need to shunt into the new mill signing. Change caps to do so when you are ready. Um, so we can play the main line for the few services. We're just free rolling at the minute because I'm from the DRL. Oh, yeah. I'm just going to crawl to the side there because I want to watch this uh, shed go through as well. This is, I think, a down low working. It's nice that you do get a bit of freight action down this line as well. nice to see. I think that's one that goes um, and turns off at Woodley, at uh, Romley and goes towards Woodley. Not for sure why it's a white light either. Um, does anyone know what the white light is for? Because usually obviously the, the end of track signals are red, but uh, there's obviously some areas that have these white lights um, in today's world. So obviously things have sort of changed and that. Over there, so that just in that uh, tree line just down there, you can see where the 3D trees are. That little bit of bridge, that's where the other line is. So it goes through Stockport. You go from there, you can see the viaducts over there. So that's how, again, obviously, you didn't see me at my video, but you can see how close everything is. This little tunnel's just in that tree line over there as well. So everything's all really close to each other at this point, but uh, yeah, really cool, anyway. I'm going to wrap things up there. So again, um, route link in the description if you wish to go and have a look or potentially purchase this one. Um, that's all over there at justtrains.net um, scenario is one from the pack of course but there's obviously other scenarios out there I've seen a few bits and pieces coming through now um, on websites uh, OTS uh, there's one as well the project real scenario is there at the minute and there is more to come um, I've got a load of, um, that are waiting to go out at some point soon enough uh, video wise there will be uh, hope cement works at some point I'll get that one done I have some other stuff on other routes to uh, do as well so everything will sort of filter through and happen when it does um so there's plenty of stuff coming 
So don't worry about that. Um, anyway, thank you very much for watching, guys. I hope you've enjoyed. And any comments or any feedback you may have, do pop it in our comment section below. We monitor this and we'll uh, do our very best to keep on top of it. And uh, if there's anything that people need to know or are struggling with, we will do our very best to help you out. Um, failing that, if you send a support, obviously JT's uh, support as well, um, it'll all get sorted out there as well. So there's a couple of places you can do that. But yeah, thank you very much for watching this one and uh, take care. And we'll see you very soon for the next video. Bye for now.